All right, my son and I have just wired the board for power. We're giving it its first run. Mundo, hit it. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah, wax. Oh, they're all, it's so pretty. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. my new non-spaghetti pedal board. Yes, it is done. Check it out. Nice and pretty. Back. Awesome. So in this video, I want to share with you how we built it, how we came to certain decisions, uh, offer some tips of why we went this way or not that way, and uh, hopefully it'll be helpful. So, cool. I ended up with a Friedman pedal board. I used the 1530 Platinum Pack. It's 15 by 30 inches. Uh, I wanted a big board. I didn't care about touring with it, traveling with it. I wanted it for home, for sessions, and uh, with this effect switching system, the Boss ES8, I'll be able to store patches, and I'll also be able to store some of my sounds for my music, which is uh, forthcoming uh, with the new Trio project. So, yeah, super excited about this. Let me give you some history. If you watch some of my, if you watch some of my, uh, my past videos or uh, posts, uh, I use this. This is a Furman pedal board. It's pretty old. Um, great delivery system for clean power, but it sucked. The hook and loop tape wouldn't stick on it. And basically, towards the end of this pedal board, I would just. Um, configure it for each gig in my studio, carry it flat to the car, put it on the dolly, roll it in flat, and keep it flat for the whole gig. Even then, things would move. The, the hook and loop tape in Vegas, uh, at least what I use, it would, it would move around and the heat would kind of emulsify some of that glue in there and move that around. So it never really worked. Like is that. I originally wanted to use Dave Friedman's Tone Merchants I call, and out of Hollywood. I called them and they were fantastic. The problem was me because they were going to build the board for me, but I didn't exactly know what I wanted. And I realized I wanted to be a guitar player and change my mind and switch out effects at times. Um, and uh, them being in LA and me being in Vegas, it had been hard to have a lot of back and forth conversations. So I proceeded with them in mind, but I wasn't getting anything done. So then I talked to our Las Vegas amp tech. I call him the amp guru of Las Vegas. His name is Carl Popek. And I asked him if he would help me build a board. And uh, he said yes. I was very happy about that. And the idea was to keep the whole pedal board organic. So if I wanted to switch out an effect, I could go to his workshop and we could we could change the board as, as I grew with it. So that worked out great. I started leaning towards the Temple Audio boards. I really like the way they have an, their attachment system. Um, they also have tons of choices for what kind of modules to add to the board. And uh, that's actually what made me stall because Carl Pulpick was trying to help me and I didn't know what I wanted. It was too many choices. The Temple Audio guy suggested I split the board in two and one, one half could be like a flyout board. So, so I was stalling on that. And that's when I read about the Friedman 
pedal boards that were coming out. And uh, what was so nice about that is all the thinking was done for you. You got everything. You got a six inch foot buffer bay and also a power grid, which was nice because I wanted clean power and there were so many other choices. Once again, I didn't know where to go and some people said only use this one and other people were like, you have to go this route. Uh, I trust the Friedman name, that, that worked out fantastic. So um, yeah, other than cabling, I was done. I even, um, so here's the power grid, buffer bay, the tape, I even got some extra left over. Awesome. I was able to get rid of all these uh, wall warts. So talking about the power, I knew I'd need more than the 10 isolated powers. I added a power strip. I added a one spot to power things like my tuner. And then um, also I wanted an attachment for an iPad because I'm reading music. A lot of my gigs are like uh, one-off corporate gigs. Oh. And if you're using an iPad, you don't want the battery to go dead. So also uh, a lot of the corporate gigs, you're sitting there all day and... Uh, doing nothing and uh, it's nice to keep your phone charged as well so that's nice uh, a piece of advice I can offer is the the buffer bay you can he it's brilliant he gave you the choice of uh, putting it up against against the board or receding it and we found receding it was better because I've been gigging with this and uh, with with your um, and with your quarter inches, they actually stick out and people can step on that. And that's a no-no. So if you get in far enough, they're basically just stepping on your chords. By the way, it's four chords I'm using. Uh, guitar out to my amp, guitar in, and then uh, effects loop for now. And uh, I keep things simple for me. Color-coded, red for return, silver for send. So that helps. far as the board cabling everybody wanted me to go with George L so I was gonna go with George L's the main reason we didn't and we went with evidence audio is we were very worried about this little cavity here so we didn't know how long how big these would be and as luck would have it I ended up having to finish the board with George L so you can see how the evidence audios have a, a Cleaner, smaller profile compared to the George Ailes. So that's nice. I can fit like a Tumnus or those smaller kind of mini pedals in there. We still don't know what we're going to do, um, but this was the most conversation we had. And if you check out Pete Thorne's board, I think he's using the same pedal board. Uh, Friedman and him use a pedal platform right over here, and that would solve that. Um, I still have a lot of room to use stuff, but uh, check that out. Check out his videos. Pete Thorne's the man. Um, I can't say enough for this guy, Geisnode, or this company, Geisnode. I found them on eBay. Bought the evidence audio from him. He was great because, once again, I didn't know how many feet I was going to use. I didn't know if I wanted right angles or straight, straight angle, quarter inches. We ended up using 30 feet of cable. He was great. He changed with me as I changed my mind. You had everything you needed. And um, I didn't... I needed more than 30 feet, so we ended up getting uh, extra 10 feet or 5 feet of George L's. And uh, Carl was on tour. I had to actually finish the last few wirings. And um, personally, for somebody who doesn't do this kind of stuff very good, I got to say the, uh, the evidence audio was much easier and more satisfying. There was a click in there. You knew, you knew that um, you were making a solid connection. Either way, you still check it out. You still, you know, test it with the meter. That's awesome. Uh, what else can I say? I don't use a volume pedal, but if I do, I got one ready to put in the front or in the back or someplace on the input. And uh, that's it. I just and I did forget to mention one thing, which is small, but I think it's a big deal. Is check it out. See the feet, right? There's a clearance of your board before the ground. I was at a gig and a drink spilled. Somebody spilled their drink. Okay, it was me, I spilled my Coke. And 
uh, didn't go all the way under the board, but it went a little under the board, and I think one of these feet are the only things that touched liquid, and the board remained unsticky, unwet, so it's awesome. I would recommend that for any board. I never thought about that, so there you go.